Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video, another plug side chat. So a video the other day kind of caught my eye and I was looking at it and it was about the old Canada, I believe it's Nanticoke coal power plant that was recently demolished in order to make room for a photovoltaic solar panel array. You know, I mentioned the Navajo generating plant in Arizona in Page, Arizona, that's being basically decommissioned, shut down, because really coal isn't cost effective at this point in terms of power generation. And we really don't need that extra CO2 going into the atmosphere, you know, given that we're getting very close to doubling what the pre-industrial CO2 levels were in the atmosphere, and we're seeing the results in terms of climate change as well. So it is something that we need to start reducing, right? Coal is one of the principal contributors right now to CO2 and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But at the same time, I, I feel like we need to be a little bit more pragmatic about our transition. Uh, there's a, you know an expression out in the rural parts of America where we talk about throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And uh, yeah, that's not necessarily something we want to do. Part of this is all based in, I think, a general ignorance or at least an ignorance in the general population about the power grid, but also about how we talk about the power grid. So most people believe that a large portion of our energy comes from fossil fuels. And technically that's correct, but it's not 100% correct. There's a sort of a lie of omission that's going on there. The fact is that 80 to 90% of our power comes from steam turbine generation. And how that works is water is heated, turns into steam, the steam runs a turbine, the turbine runs a generator and creates power. And again, that's 80 to 90% of our electricity is generated that way. That's where the omission comes in, is it's just assumed that it needs to be fossil fuels that are heating that water. That's just simply not the case. So what we have here is we have a number of these coal plants, we have a number of natural gas plants that all use those fossil fuels by choice to heat the water that runs the steam turbines. And that Nanticote in Canada, that was no different, right? But by tearing down what was, I believe, the largest coal power plant in the world at the time, uh, something like a four gigawatt power plant, and replacing it with photovoltaic, well, photovoltaic isn't the most efficient to begin with. And so essentially what you've done with the footprint of a four gigawatt coal power plant, you've replaced it with a 44 megawatt photovoltaic. You know, that's significantly less energy, you know, basically a tenth of a percent. How do we justify scaling down our fossil fuel power plants right now? It's not really something that I think is justifiable. But also on top of that, I think it, it ignores the fact that those steam turbines don't need to be run by fossil fuels. So there are a number of technologies that you can use, uh, including things like evacuated cylinder solar cells that essentially heat water. And that water can be used to run the steam turbines. It's the way concentrated solar works already. And the interesting thing about it is because the coal power plant itself doesn't really need the surface area outside of the plant to run and operate. You could build a canopy over these coal plants. So essentially, you're not even shutting them down. You're retrofitting them to run primarily off of solar collected power. And, you know, if you need additional power, the infrastructure is still in place that you could supplement with coal or you could supplement with natural gas, but the likelihood is that you wouldn't need to. 
especially if you were implementing it with other technologies, things I've talked about like concentrated air energy storage, where you compress air down and then you, you scavenge that heat and you use that to run the uh, steam turbines, heat recovery steam turbine generation. Uh, you can run large steam accumulators to gather steam and then use that to continue running. And one of the big advantages this has over something like photovoltaic, well, photovoltaic, when the sun goes down, the power goes out. And there's still usually hours of peak time before and after the sun you know, rises and sets where people are, have a high demand for power. Well, if you're concentrating that energy in something like water, well, you can continue to run your steam turbine even when the sun has already set, or if you're saving up and storing enough energy, you can run it in the morning before the sun rises. So there are lots of advantages. And you, you also don't necessarily just have to use something like evacuated tube solar. We could improve those designs you can use other materials to gather that heat and use that heat to heat the water as well. Uh, supercritical carbon dioxide could be used as a heat transfer agent, but you could even use petroleum-based oils, which you know, you're know you reusing hydrocarbons at that point and you're not actually burning them off, which I think is a very important step forward. But my point here is you know, even just a single acre of evacuated tube solar or water solar collectors like that can absorb about 20 to 24 megawatt hours of energy a day. So if you look at the acreage of these actual coal plants, it makes a lot more sense to actually gather the solar energy that's striking those plants anyway. They're not using it, might as well use it. And what we're looking at is in a few years, not very many at all, you could continue with the current infrastructure and retrofit it to a point where we're using a fraction of the fossil fuels that we currently are using for both the peaker plants, like the natural gas peaker plants, where you can use, again, like a steam accumulator uh, in conjunction with it, or these coal power plants where you know, maybe you're reducing the coal usage by 40, 50, 60, possibly as much as 80 or 90 percent. In some cases, during the middle of summer, you might not be using any coal at all. So I think that's maybe a more pragmatic approach. And I feel like you get a lot more of a buy in from some of these power plants where they put in massive investments right now short-sightedly so sure because they're only running off of a single heat source to run their steam turbine power generation but it gives them a chance to retrofit a really expensive investment while you know minimizing losses and it's a it's a win-win for everybody it reduces the amount of greenhouse gases it preserves their investment and it hastens the transition away from fossil fuels. And it, it could get to the point where, hey, maybe we're running all of these old coal power plants and all of these old natural gas power plants without any hydrocarbons being burned at all. So I really think we need to consider these alternatives. Like I said, sometimes it is actually easier to fix or retrofit than it is to reinvent the wheel or replace with something like photovoltaic, which I think is a great technology. It's good for personal use, but while it's still only 20 to 30% efficient, it's really not worth replacing an existing power plant with a technology that's expensive, in some ways delicate, and like I said, is relatively inefficient. I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think these technologies could be leveraged? Do you think uh, we could make a transition away from coal or natural gas very, very rapidly while still using the existing infrastructure, the existing steam turbine infrastructure that we have in place? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.